video, we will explore what complications may arise from removal of the gallbladder, a procedure commonly performed through laparoscopic approach and operation is called laparoscopic cholestectomy. It is important to highlight that the great majority of, majority of these operations do not have any complications and patients can go home usually on the day of their operation. So by and large it is a very safe operation but in a small number of patients complication may arise. So let's just examine that very briefly. Firstly uh, is bleeding. Uh, now bleeding is an uncommon complication but let's examine the sites where it may occur. So looking at this diagram again that's the stomach, the pancreas, the liver, the gallbladder with gallstones and the bile tube. And this is the artery that supplies the liver and it supplies a small branch to the gallbladder and it is possible that there may be some bleeding from this branch although the surgeon will attempt to clip that but sometimes they, this branch may cause bleeding. Equally it's possible that during removal of the gallbladder from this site um, the, there may be some bleeding from the liver. Now the gallbladder surgery is performed from the abdomen by inserting ports. Uh, these are small holes that traverse uh, the abdominal wall. I'm just drawing an abdomen there and you can see the little slits that indicate these ports. And sometimes there could be bleeding associated with one of these port sites as the, as the port or the instrument goes in, it may disrupt a small blood vessel. Uh, in general, the bleeding tends to be limited it tends to stop on its own but very rarely uh, this could be a significant complication now let's move to the next complication when the bile leaks out of the biliary apparatus uh, the bile duct and the gallbladder so during operation the surgeon attempts to control this part of this of, of the gallbladder called the cystic duct that connects it to the bile tube and he tends to place um, clips over here to stop the bile from coming out of the main bile tube. Now this is the, the main direction of flow of bile. Rarely uh, these clips don't work so well and bile may leak out. Sometimes the bile leak also occurs from the liver bed where there is a tiny bile, bile radical or bile tube that, e that connects directly to the gallbladder and the bile may leak out. These are the commonest sources of bile leak. Now, again, very uncommonly, there may be actually an injury to the bile tube that I'll talk about a bit later, where a bile leak may occur. Now, this tends to the bile tends to form a puddle, uh, and that can get infected uh, and give rise to symptoms associated with intraabdominal infection. Um, Infection, the commonest site for infection to occur is around the skin incision site, so the stabs that are required to insert instruments. Uh, and these manifest uh, with redness, swelling and pain. Uh, and they usually require a course of antibiotic from your primary care physician or your surgeon. Infections may occur inside the abdomen if there is bile leak or if there is any other injury within the abdomen which causes fluid to collect and the fluid can sometimes get infected giving rise to signs of infection such as temperature uh, and unwellness. Um, I think that's all I want to say about the infection. Okay, the next complication I wish to talk about is retained stone. So what does that mean? The, the surgeon tends to remove the gallbladder and he gets around this part of the gallbladder um, to, uh, to be able to control that and to put clips on it. And in doing so, he's able to retain all of the gallstones in this part of the gallbladder where all of these come out uh, with the specimen. Rarely though, the gallbladder stones may migrate to the other side of the bile tube that the surgeon cannot see and they can get left behind. Over time these stones then travel down uh, the bile tube like this and they can cause pain and jaundice and the patient gets very disappointed that after a few days of surgery uh, the pain comes back and this time it may or may not be associated with 
jaundice. Another possibility with these stones is the dropped stones, which is a different entity altogether. Uh, and in that, while performing the operation, uh, this, there may be a defect in the wall of the gallbladder and these stones may drop outside into the abdominal cavity. Most of the times the surgeon will be able to see these and take these out, but very rarely these get left behind and become unnidus for infection and, and debilitation for the, for the patient. They are not always easy to diagnose when there are dropped stones uh, within the abdominal cavity. Uh, okay, we can stop here. Bile duct injury is a serious complication of gallbladder surgery. It's quite rare. It tends to occur in one in 400 patients. It depends on the expertise of the surgeon and their experience. It is more likely if the surgeon is inexperienced. Um, sometimes it occurs uh, for technical reasons. If the anatomy is not straightforward or it is aberrant, or there's a lot of inflammation in the area. So those are the commonest causes. What does it mean? So as I explained before, uh, the main objective is to control this area of the gallbladder, put clips on it and divide it. But when there is injury to the bowel tube over here, um, during this process, then that is serious. Sometimes there's misidentification and the surgeon may put a ligature or a clip around the bowel tube. Sometimes it is are damaged or the side wall may get damaged sometimes there may be heat injury so how does it uh, present itself the the go the bile duct injury may be recognized by the surgeon at the time of the procedure in which case he will attempt to repair it or send the, uh, the patient somewhere else to a specialized center but at times the surgeon does not recognize that the bile tube has been injured and the patient uh, may go home and then later come back with jaundice pain or signs of bile leak uh, which present themselves with infection inside the abdomen uh, when this area uh, where the bile collects uh, may cause symptoms. Almost always a bile duct injury would require a special opinion and repair. It's very rare that the bile duct injuries um, are so minor uh, that nothing further needs doing. Uh, but that is a subject for a specialist surgeon. Lastly, there could be injury to surrounding structures. Um, there could be injury to the colon, which can be, uh, which is sometimes in close proximity to the gallbladder, or may get attacked to the gallbladder with adhesions due to inflammation of the gallbladder. So I'll just draw a little bit of a colon over here for uh, illustrative purposes, and the colon can get injured during the gallbladder operation. Again, that's very very rare. The duodenum. Uh, which is down here, which is, a, which is the early part of the small bowel, can also get injured rarely or they very, very rarely injured to the stomach uh, bowel. So these are the commonest common sites that can get injured, but these injuries are exceedingly rare. And again, they would manifest um, in the post-op period if the injury was not recognized with un unwellness and intra-abdominal infection. Um, or if it's recognized at the time of the operation, then the surgeon would attempt to repair these. So this culminates our discussion on complications um, associated with gallbladder surgery.